Well, hey friends, it is Friday. It's Friday evening. And I just wanted to come on and chat with you about some last minute Christmas things. Some things that have been kind of rolling around in my head and um, just some things that I wanted to pass on to you as you get into your preparations. Like we are coming on zero hour for getting all the things done as far as Christmas is concerned. And good for you if you've got all this stuff done. I'm really, really quite happy for you. Um, we've got a few things still left to do around here. Uh, some one final grocery haul to do. Um, Shane's been out of town. He's coming back in tonight. Um, and I wasn't able to get to the store to get everything else that we need. So we will be going out tomorrow on a Saturday <laughs> before Christmas to get the things that we need. But um, what I said to my sister today was they were heading out as a family to do some things. And I said um, something like, enjoy the crowds. And she had a really great attitude about wanting to be out and about. And I think that's kind of the thing that we need to just keep in focus. Everyone's going to be out. Um, let's treat everyone with kindness and respect and recognize that not everybody is going to be in as good of a mood as maybe you are. Extend grace, Christmas spirit, all of that. Um, and you know, if you have to be out, like be merry. <laughs> okay. So I have a list of a few things that I just wanted to pass along to you. They are in no particular order. They're just things that kind of um, came to my mind that I wanted to pass on to you. So first is wash all of your Christmas blankets and pillow covers, the things maybe that are in your living room. Um, and wash those Christmas jammies too. Um, I did that the other night. I tend to always wash the Christmas jammies. Uh, before any of us put them on. I never know where they've been, if they've fallen on the floor, um, if they've been bought and returned, anything like that. Tried on the whole nine yards. I just would rather be safe than sorry and wash all that stuff. I use some Scentsy Washer Whiff so that everything smells really nice um, and then it's just soft and smells really good. So um, I did that yesterday because we had family come in for Aubrey's birthday and I just washed all the blankets and the pillow covers and tidied and freshened everything up that way. Um, this weekend, don't forget to change your linens. Every Friday, I tend to change all of the sheets on our beds and put on like, you know, fresh bedding. So definitely get that done either today or tomorrow, sometime this weekend. Um, so you have fresh, clean sheets for Christmas, but you're not dealing with it on Christmas Eve. Um, you've got it like a couple of days in advance. Next, think about what your family is going to be wearing for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Um, if you've got, you know, church to attend or festivities, um, even if you're just staying at home, what, were you, what will your people be wearing? Do you need to get it ironed? Um, I was doing laundry last night and I realized that for the pants that Colt will have, they were wrinkled so they, that he's going to wear on Christmas Eve to church. They're wrinkled, um, so I do need to iron those. I need to make sure that Aubrey has tights. What is she gonna wear, wear in her hair, like a bow or headband? Um, get all that stuff out. Set it out this weekend. Get it all together. Take stock of what you have. Maybe there's a run in the tights or you can't find a pair of shoes. Get it all together so that at zero hour you are not um, gathering all of those things together and running around like a chicken with her head cut off or as the fly lady says like a Christmas martyr. Um, she talked about this several times especially last year but it really sunk in my heart big time this year about being a Christmas martyr. Nobody wants that. Um, nobody wants a mom who is just running around with her hair on fire and stressed and angry and frustrated Nobody wants that, least of all you. So do what you can now to prepare so that doesn't happen. If you're doing a turkey, you better make sure it's starting to thaw um, if it's frozen. Fly Lady recommends to put it in a garbage bag. Whatever you do, I would just put some kind of container under your turkey so that it will catch any juices that may happen to escape from the turkey or any of that like thawing, like ice kind of thing. Um, so like stick them. Um, like a 9 by 13 pan under or a cookie sheet or stick it in a garbage bag, but definitely start to get your turkey thawed out. Also, you want to make a timeline for your food and all of your food preparations. So I am kind of 
uh, I, I've done this already. I have figured out what I can make ahead, even parts of a recipe that I can make ahead, what day I'm gonna be doing that, how I'm gonna be doing that, um, so that it just all comes together. We are hosting Christmas breakfast and we're also hosting Christmas dinner. So, and the family is free to come at any point during the afternoon and hang out with us. So we'll have, you know, appetizers and lunchy things. Um, so we're hosting and I'm excited, but I wanna make sure that I have a timeline of when things need to go in the oven so that all comes together seamlessly. And just to piggyback on that, what can you cook ahead? So I made a list of everything that will be pre, that will, blah, 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 that we will be preparing for Christmas Eve and Christmas breakfast and Christmas day because we often, we just invite the family over for Christmas Eve if they want to come um, before church and sometimes they do do that. So, um, and even if not, we will, you know, have us here. So we would like to celebrate in our own way with food. So what can you prepare ahead of time? So for instance, one of the things that I'm gonna make is deviled eggs. And I'm not gonna do that on Christmas Day. I am going to get my eggs prepared, um, not assembled, but I'm going to boil the eggs probably um, Sunday sometime, and I'll cut them in half, I'll make the filling, but I'm not gonna put them together until Tuesday before we start to eat. Christmas Day, we're also gonna have sweet rolls, um, cinnamon rolls, whatever you wanna call them, um, and the dough takes a while to come together and things have to rise. I'm definitely not gonna be doing this on Christmas morning. No way, no how, uh-uh. So today I'm actually making my dough. I've got my mixer here. Um, and as soon as I'm done with this video, I'm actually gonna put the dough together. I'm gonna get everything rolled and cut out and all assembled and I'm gonna put them in the freezer so that Christmas Eve, I can pull them out and I'll probably pull them out um, in the morning and just, pull them out of the freezer, stick them in the fridge, and allow them to thaw. And then early Christmas morning, I'll pull them out of the fridge, allow them to come to temperature, and they take only 13 to 14 minutes to cook. So um, I will have all of that done. Another thing we're gonna do, Christmas Eve breakfast, we're gonna have monkey bread, and monkey bread takes a while to cook. So I'm gonna have all of that prepped ahead of time. I'm not gonna do that on um, Christmas morning. So whatever you can do ahead of time, do. One more thing <laughs> that I'm prepping ahead, which is a lot of stuff actually. Sweet potato casserole. It is like the thing that I make that everybody always requests for the holidays. And um, so I'm just gonna get my sweet potatoes cooked a couple days ahead of time, but I'm gonna put them in my crock pot and I'm gonna let the crock pot do it for me. I'm gonna line my crock pot with foil and scrub up my potatoes, stick them in the crock pot and just allow them to cook all day and they'll be caramelized and delicious and wonderful. I'll scrape them out of the shells and um, mix up the filling, kind of all that I do for the sweet potato bake and just have it ready in the fridge so that when it's time to cook it, I can throw it in the oven and it's good to go. So think about those things that you can make ahead of time, even if it means that you start tonight or today and put things in the freezer and pull them out. Um, it'll just be so much easier. Another thing to do is clean out your fridge. Definitely get this done this weekend. And by cleaning out your fridge, I mean start eating all of the leftovers, eating all the things that um, you know are gonna take up room in your fridge. And also physically clean out your fridge. Um, wipe down the shelves. Um, it's so simple to do, um, especially if your fridge is, you know, getting down to bare bones before you do your big Christmas grocery shop. Um, wipe off the ledges and all of the things. I do it after I'm done washing my dishes. So I've got like still some hot soapy water in my sink and my cloth is ready to go and I just wipe out the shelves and just tidy up the fridge. So physically in both ways, get your fridge cleaned out so that you have space for hashtag all the food. So Christmas Eve, get your garbage out. <laughs> um, make sure that you have, um, like if you're having people over on Christmas Eve, um, definitely do this like sometime during the day or even the night before, get your garbage empty and your recycling bins. We have to recycle here so we have a recycling bin and a garbage can here in the kitchen. Um, and so, you just get them out, <laughs> like clean them out so they are just ready and empty um, to be filled up because they will get filled up quick. 
Okay, so this little tip is, I'm calling it a Christmas kit. Um, and basically it's just some things that you wanna have with you in the living room when you're opening gifts. And for us, that's like a pair of scissors, um, batteries, uh, a garbage bag to hold all of the paper. So for us, we'd probably have to do like a garbage bag for the paper and then a garbage bag for non-recyclables. Um, also, sometimes maybe you'll want like a pen, um, <laughs> like if people get crossword puzzle books or something like that, I don't know, just having all that stuff kind of central um, so you don't have to get up and get all the things. Um, and have a safe spot for your gift cards. Uh, one year when I was growing up, um, we got uh, gift cards to the mall. And it was money, I can't remember, but mine got thrown away and I was horrified to find that, like I couldn't find it. And so Christmas day and night, or Christmas night, I was out in the garage like going through all of the garbage to try and find the money and it was very stressful because it was a lot and it wasn't a good time. Um, so have a safe spot for your gift card. Another tip is don't neglect your Christmas cleaning. Um, I think with all of the hustle and bustle and things that we have to do, it can be easy to kind of just not do that cleaning, that deep cleaning. Um, but when we celebrated Aubrey's birthday last night, uh, I deep cleaned the house and it felt so good. Like, I know you know that feeling. It just feels so good. And if you're not going to deep clean your house now, when are you going to do it? I mean, Christmas is kind of like, it, there's not a whole lot that's bigger than Christmas. As Christians, we celebrate Christ's birth um, and, you know, it's just, it's just the culmination. For me, I changed the attitude of my heart to, um, I'm preparing him room. Um, like that Christmas carol, let every heart prepare him room. And as I prepare my own heart, I physically want to prepare the heart of my home um, and having people in. And I don't want them sitting in mess. So I employ my kids. They're... Uh, just turned eight and almost five and I give them wet cloths. I let them um, wipe down the coffee table and the walls and they're actually going to mop my floor because I hate mopping but they get the biggest kick out of cleaning. Like it's bizarre. So I just am letting him do it. My young son, um, he loves to vacuum so I just set him up with a vacuum cleaner and he takes the hose and he does the crevices and I have to do like, you know, the actual vacuuming of the floor, but he does a lot of it for me. So get your kids involved. Um, even if they're young, they, they can help. So if you're hosting or even if you're not hosting, just, um, one thing to do would be to get your music ready. If you're going to play music, my mom always had, um, Christmas music playing while we ate dinner and it was just, it was always so beautiful. So you know, find a Pandora station or Spotify or something like that. Um, YouTube, some YouTube uh, playlists. There's my dinner. Um, some YouTube playlists will play without ads. Um, I use an app called Musi, M-U-S-I, and it will play songs from YouTube, but it won't play the ads. Um, and so I will just run that through like this little Bluetooth speaker that I have. But it might just behoove you to find some music to play. I'm also really old school um, and I play CDs on my DVD player and <laughs> just let those play um, throughout dinner and the time that we're together. Okay, so make a list of everything that you need. Um, if, you, if you need food, figure out what you need. How many blocks of cream cheese? How much regular cheese? Do you need chips? Do you need drinks? Um, what do you need? And write it out. And write out a list by store of what you need. And by all means, if you can stay out of those stores, stay out of those stores. Um, hold on. So I used to work retail. I worked several years at Walmart and I was a cashier um, and we were a small town and Walmart was the spot to be. And there were many on Christmas Eve that I had to work. Um, and it was painful to be away from my family. The store would shut down around 6.30 and now I hear it's like around eight. But that is because people keep going to the stores. <laughs> the more that we can be prepared and stay out of the stores, there'll be less demand um, for stores to be open. And we will, you know, as a society, hopefully move back to that point where we're prioritizing quiet and time together and um, not so much materialistic stuff and being with one another as opposed to being so last minute, rushing into the stores to get whatever it is we need. Like, let's stay prepared and on top of things. 
obviously emergencies happen and you know maybe you're like me and you couldn't get to the store ahead of time um and you know there are those exceptions of course but if you can stay out of the stores let's stay out of the stores okay and the last thing i'm going to leave you with is take some time to be quiet um i posted about this on instagram last night and i'll leave my instagram name here if my kids <laughs> this is why i need a quiet night um but it is so important that we take time to be quiet and still to enjoy this time to enjoy your christmas decorations to turn out the noise to turn off the christmas movie and to turn off the music and just sit in quiet um, or maybe it is to um, have some soft Christmas music playing and sit in your house and enjoy the twinkle lights, enjoy being with your family, read stories together. Even if you have older kids, there's so much research that says that it is so beneficial to even um, high schoolers, teenagers, for a parent to read to them. So don't be afraid of reading Christmas stories out loud to your family. Read the actual Christmas story from the Bible. Snuggle, cuddle, um, get together and just enjoy being with one another. One thing that we're going to do is we are actually going to um, spend the night in the living room on Sunday night and the whole family, we're going to just sleep around the Christmas tree and watch Christmas movies. Um, and then for me, it'll be an early night. I tend to stay up way too late um, and heading into Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, especially knowing that I'm going to be hosting. Um, I want to get good sleep. And so we are going to have that time together as a family. And we've never done that and I'm really excited for it. So um, going to bed early, turn off your phone. Um, you don't need to see what everybody's up to. Uh, I know I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to myself here because I love to hop on Instagram stories and Instagram and see what uh, my friends are up to. And this is a fun time of year to peek in at what other people are doing. Um, it's why we share on YouTube. Um, but dare I say, take time to just unplug yourself and focus on your family and don't be so quick to share um, everything as it happens in the moment. Live your life so that you have a story to tell. And lastly, I'll just leave with, with kind of a couple words that I shared on Instagram. Everything in this world is pulling at us and screaming at us. We hear the dings and the pings. I mean, you heard my my stove telling me it's time for dinner. Um, we are shouted at, like now, on so many levels. But Jesus came as the Prince of Peace. And I think that in this time, we talk about hustle and bustle. We talk about um, the busy and the hurried and the crazy and all of the things at Christmas time when really Christ was born as the Prince of Peace. He was born in a stable. He was born on a quiet night, unassuming, um, and the world didn't even know. And I think we need to hearken back to that, especially in our souls and in the way that um, we celebrate as a family. Be loud, be crazy, enjoy, have so much fun. Like that's what, um, the, the, that is absolutely what this time is for. But don't get caught up in the Christmas crazy and remember that the Prince of Peace came to give you peace. Um, and then just embrace that this season. Okay. Okay dinner is ready and I've got to go. So anyways, those are a few tips from me to you. I would love it if you have some tips to leave them down below. Like let's let this be a community of building one another up and sharing ideas because there are, I'm sure things that I have forgotten. Um, and I would love all of the advice that you can pass along. So thanks so much guys. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.